Hello and welcome to this video lesson on two different types of nonverbal reasoning. We've got odd one out and grids or pictures. Okay, so two um, different types of nonverbal reasoning that can be tricky, um, but we're going to go through them and we're going to think about the best ways of approaching them and finding the answer. And then um, once you've watched this video, click the link in the description for some more um, ex some, a worksheet with some more examples so you can get practicing. Okay, so. Um, we're going to start off with odd one out. Now, on the screen, we've got four objects, and our job is to find which one of those objects is the odd one out. Is it A, B, C, or D? Um, and one way to approach this is to think of the acronym SNAPS. Okay, so SNAP stands for shape, number, angle, position, shading, and size. And if we consider each of these factors um, when looking for the odd one out, it's likely that it's going to help us many times of finding the odd one out, okay? Now, SNAPS is very, very useful and can be applied across many different types of nonverbal reasoning. So, for example, in this question, if we think about the shape or the shapes that are involved in the question, we can see we've got a rectangle with an arrow in each object, okay? Each object has a rectangle and an arrow. So, in terms of finding the odd one out, They've all got a, a rectangle and an arrow, so there's nothing there that's going to help us. All right, so we move on to the next factor, which is number. Number is all about the number of things that we have in each object. So we've got, again, a shape and an arrow in A, which is two things, two things in B, the shape, uh, the rectangle, sorry, and the arrow. In C, we've got the rectangle and the arrow, and in D, we've got the rectangle and the arrow. So we've got two things in each object. Uh, therefore, we can't do anything with that. Um, then we talk about the angle. So we know what angle means. Angle means uh, the orientation, the way that a shape is rotated, okay, or an object is rotated. And if we look at A, um, we can start, we can see something. If we look at A, A, we have the arrow pointing in the bottom right hand corner of the rectangle. B, we have the arrow pointing at the bottom. C, the arrow is in the top right corner. And D, the arrow is pointed to the top left corner. So although we can see change, each of them are different. We've got bottom right, uh, bottom center, top right, and top left. So which one is the odd one out? Because they're all in different positions. So let's be mindful that we have noticed something. We'll go on to the next factor, and we might come back to that in a minute because we know something's going up with the, uh, the we know something's going on with the angle. Okay, the position. Position is all about where the objects are. So we can see the rectangle never changes place. It's always on the outside. And the arrow is always on the inside, going from one end to another end. OK, so position and angle can relate very much, um, but we'll come back to both of those in a second. Let's just move on to shading. Shading, there's nothing really to talk about because shading and color, each of them is identical. We've got white rectangle with a black arrow in each of them. Uh, and size, size, the rectangles are all the same size. Um, the arrows are all the same size, although we might argue actually that B is shorter than the rest, but maybe that's only because it's going from one end of the rectangle to the other end, and it's going from top to bottom rather than from a corner to the opposite corner, uh, which means the arrow would be shorter. Perhaps that is what's the odd one out. Now, let's go back to angle and position, because we know we've picked up on something there. What can we say is odd about any of them in terms of the angle or the position of the arrow? Well, they are all pointing to different corners, okay? But we need to think of something. We need to think of something that unites three of them and excludes one of the others. So we can't say, for example, the answer is D because it's pointing to the top left corner and none of the others are, because all of the other options, A, B, and C, don't have that thing to unite them. We can't say, well, A, B, and C are all uh, pointing to the bottom right, so it must be D. We need to figure out something that's going to unite three options and exclude one option, okay? Um, and in this case, if we look at B, the arrow is going from top to bottom, okay? And then you might say, well, the answer might not be B, because C is going from bottom left to top right. But actually, if I say the answer is B, because the arrow is going from top to bottom, the thing that it, that unites the other three options is A, C, and D are going from one corner to another corner. B isn't. B isn't going from corner to corner. It's going from side to side, okay? And A, C, and D, the thing that unites them is we have an arrow going from one corner to another corner. So we figured out something that unites three of them and excludes one of them, which means we've got our answer. The answer is B, okay? Um, so what I did there is I used snaps. Now, 
we we must remember that with um, the 11 plus exam our speed is important and what i did is i just spent how long did i spend doing this uh, the time isn't on the screen but i spent a considerable amount of time answering this question now we want to be quicker than this okay the only reason i'm taking quite you know quite taking quite some time is because i need to explain things uh, in depth but the more we practice this the quicker and easier it will become for us okay we'll be doing it very very quickly soon okay now with this snaps acronym we want to have this we want to re uh, remember this we want to remember shape number angle position shape and size practice remembering that so that's in your head okay um because with many types of nonverbal reasoning, as we've just seen with this one, it can be very, very important. OK, if we don't know what to look for, SNAPS is going to remind us of some of all of the things that we can look for. OK, so let's look at the next question. This time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to pause the video and have a go at answering yourself. When you think you've got the answer, play the video and see if you're correct. OK, so once you if you have finished um, giving this question a go all by yourself, um, let's now move on to solving it. If you haven't, make sure you pause it and give it a go yourself. Okay, so we can see that just at a glance, all of them are very, very similar. They've all got two squares and one circle, okay? So when we're talking about shape and number, there's not much we can do here because shape, well, they've all got the same shapes and number. They've all got the same number of things. We've got three things in each, in each object, okay? Or we've got four if you include the outside rectangle. Um, what about angle? Now, the angle doesn't appear to change because the squares are the same orientation in each object and the circle, of course, is the same as well. Had the circle rotated, it might have been too difficult to notice that, okay? So we can't notice anything in terms of the angle of any of the objects changing, but position is a bit different, isn't it? If we look, the position of things change throughout each box. If we look Forget the circles for a second. If we look at the squares, we can see the squares are going in different places for each object. So for example, in A, we've got a square in the top left and a square in the bottom right. B, we've got square in the bottom left, square in the bottom right. C, square in the top left, square in the top right. And D, square in the top left, square in the bottom right. Now, as I was describing the position of the squares, nothing was jumping out at me. I know that they change, but there didn't seem to be any logic to the way they were changing. However, let's now look at the other thing in the box. We've got a circle. Let's look at the position of the circles. So the circle is dead center in A, dead center in B. It isn't dead center in C. Well, it is dead center of the bottom, but it's not dead center bang in the middle, is it? Okay, so it's center at the bottom, but not center of the entire rectangle. And D is back to being dead center in the middle. So C, is the odd one out and to make sure c is the odd one out what can i say that unites a b and d the thing that i can say that unites a b and d is that a b and d have a circle bang in the middle of the rectangle okay and now i've got my answer shading and size is now irrelevant i don't have to look for for anything to do with shading and size because i've already found something that excludes one of the objects however let's let's have a quick look just to make sure shading is black square uh, circles are black throughout every object, okay? And the size, they don't change, okay? The size remains consistent throughout every object. So I found my answer. Okay, so what we're going to do now is move on to a new type of nonverbal reasoning. But remember, in the link, which is in the description of this video, um, if you click on that link, there will be some more examples of these questions, okay? So make sure we get practicing. Um, but let's move on now to a type of nonverbal reasoning, which you might know as grids, you might know as pictures. Don't worry too much about the names of these activities, okay? Because they can change from exam to exam. Um, so don't get too comfortable with calling it one thing. Just remember the process and, and the way we solve each of these um, different types of activity. Okay, so in this activity, we are given a grid, which is at the top here, top left. And we can see that we have nine spaces inside this grid. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But we can see that the one in the middle at the bottom is empty or it has a question mark. And we need to figure out which one of these objects, A, B, C, or D, goes inside that space. Now, once again, snaps can be very useful. However, snaps isn't on the screen. I'm going to rely on my memory, okay? 
If you don't remember snaps, it's absolutely fine. Get remembering, but for the time being, maybe you want to pause the video and you might want to write snaps down, see if you can remember what each letter stands for. And then you can um, go through this question with me before we go into the next one, which you're going to do all by yourself. Um, if you need help remembering snaps, rewind the video. It's in the top left of the last question. But for now, let's move on to this question. Okay, so with a question like this, we can see that there's a grid. OK, and we can see that there are similar objects that follow on from each other. So, for example, if we just look in the top row here, we've got stars. The middle row, we've got arrows. And in the bottom row, we've got circles. Now, it might be the case in other questions where the, um, the, the objects are consistent in columns rather than rows. So, for example, it could be the case in another um, question where we have stars down the side here and we have arrows down the middle and we have circles down here, okay? So it's important that we identify which way we're working, okay? And in this case, of course, we're going from left to right. So um, the reason that's important to note is because it's likely that any sort of change in, in any inconsistency that we're looking for is going to happen from left to right because that's where our grid is focused, from left to right, okay? Um, and if we look at the stars, we need to figure out how are they changing? What is going on from box one to box two to box three with these stars? How are they progressing? What's going on? Okay. And we can see if we think about the position of the stars, we've got top left, middle, bottom, middle, middle. Okay. Then bottom left, middle, bottom, top right, middle, middle. Middle bottom, top right, top. Okay, God, that's that's really hard to describe. Okay, so um, as I was going through the the position of the stars, I didn't really notice any consistency in the what in the position of the stars changing. Okay, but I do know that the the position was changing. So what I'm going to be mindful of right now is something is going on with the position of the stars. It might be important. It might not be important, but Hold on to that information, okay? Don't dismiss it just because you can't find anything at this point, right? If we look at the arrows and the position, um, we can see we've got top left, middle, bottom right. Then we've got middle, middle, middle. Then we've got bottom left, middle, top right. Mm, I, I mean, there isn't much to comment on in terms of how these arrows are changing. All I can say for now, is that they are changing, the positions are changing, and the same for the circles. If we look at the circles at the bottom, we can see that the positions are changing. But I don't think there is anything going on which makes me think that there's a pattern in terms of the positions. So for example, if we look at the stars, we've got star, top, star, bottom, star, middle. And if we look at the arrows, we've got star, uh, sorry, arrow top, arrow middle, arrow bottom. They're different. The way that the stars have changed from the way that the arrows are changing throughout are different. So I'm going to hold on to the fact that positions are changing in case it needs further exploration. But at the moment, I'm thinking about changing the factor of snaps that I'm looking for. OK, so I looked at position. What else can I look for? What else is jumping out at me? I can see there's something about the color of the objects, the shading, yeah, the S in snaps, the shading. So let's have a look at the shading. We've got white, black, gray. White, black, gray. White, black, gray. Okay, now something is consistent. And the consistent thing is the color from left to right is staying the same. We've got white star, black star, gray star. White star, black star, gray star. White star, black star, gray star. Okay, that's very interesting. Let's see if the same thing is going on with the arrows. So we've got black arrow, gray arrow, white arrow, black, gray, white, black, gray, white. So the colors aren't the same as the star. The star is going white, black, gray, and the arrows are going gray, black, white. But the thing that is the same is they are remaining consistent, okay? So the stars goes white, black, gray, white, black, gray, white, black, gray, and the arrows go blade, blade, black, gray, white, black, gray, white, black, gray, white. In other words, the colors for each object are staying the same from left to right. Let's see if it applies to the information we have with the circles. So the circles, we've got black, white, gray. Then we don't know. Then we've got black, white, gray. So 
we have found something that's going to make this question consistent, this grid consistent. And that is that the colors are remaining the same for each type of object. So with the circles, we have black, white, and gray, black, white, and gray. So we now know that the middle object should be black, white, and gray. And if we look at the options, we have black, white, and gray, black, gray, and white, white, black, and gray, and black, white, and gray. Okay. So we can rule out two of them. We can rule out B and C, okay? And now we are left with A and D. It could be A because A is black, white, and gray, and it could be D because D is black, white, and gray. However, we still don't know which one it is, but we've got other factors of snaps to consider. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write out snaps for you, shape, number, angle, position, shading, and size. And what I want you to do is figure out, do you think the answer is more likely to be A or do you think the answer is more likely to be D? Use snaps to help you and make sure we can find something consistent that proves that you're correct. Once you've done that, you might want to pause the video, but once you've done that, we're going to move on to the next one. But please do let me know um, what you think the answer might be. OK, let me know in the comments. What do you think the answer is and why do you think the answer is that? OK. Um, if you're watching this bit right now, as me watching me talk right now, it means that you've got an answer for this question and we're now going to move on to this question where you're getting no help whatsoever, okay? The only hint I will give you um, is remember the first thing I said about nonverbal reasoning grids, which is the questions aren't necessarily from left to right, it could be from top to bottom, okay? So just bear that in mind because um, it might help you with this question. And when you think you've got the answer, Maybe leave a comment um, to this video. Okay. Now we have gone through two different types of nonverbal reasoning. And of course, there are many types of nonverbal reasoning, which we'll go through in future videos. Um, but for now, if you want more practice with these question types, which I highly recommend, make sure that we look at the look in the description of this video and click on the link and have a go at practicing more of these questions and make yourself really, really confident with them. And don't forget snaps. Snaps is very, very important. Okay. And it will help us through many types of nonverbal reasoning questions. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.